Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Before the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 launched last week, we didn't have any Linux drivers to test out the performance of the 4090 in Linux. Now that the cards are out, I was curious to see what the story was in Linux compared to Windows using similar benchmarks. But before that, we've got lots of people telling us every day that YouTube's been unsubbing them from our channel. So make sure you're actually subscribed with notifications turned on to see when we release new videos. Anyways, can the Linux performance stack up against the Windows performance in these tests? I think it's time to find out. Let's go. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack in this video. However, because this is the first in a series of Windows versus Linux videos for this GPU generation, I wanted to keep this one short since we just haven't had enough time yet to retest every GPU in Linux yet. Now, there's chapters in all of our videos. So if you want to jump to a certain section of the video, you can use your mouse or you can hover over the progress bar or check out the timestamps in the description. Also, please make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say in this video. These are the out of the box figures and most of our GPU videos are designed this way because a vast majority of people will just never overclock their GPUs. Now, these benchmarks run in both Windows and Linux, either natively or through Proton and Steam. These aren't the perfect comparisons. However, for some of these titles, the only way to run them is through Proton. We're using our new GPU test bench for all these tests as well. And these graphs are only comparing the two models that we have here on hand and not showing any other GPUs because as I mentioned before, we just haven't had enough time to retest everything yet. We also retested both of these 4090s in Windows with the launch day driver and found the performance to be identical. We've also tested the thermals and the power draw for both of these 4090s separately and I'll link to those in the description. But let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. As mentioned, you can use that magic pause button at any time during the video to take a look at these graphs for a little bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing even at 1080p with this benchmark is that no matter what OS you choose, the results are almost identical within a margin of error. For instance, the Tough card and the Founders card even have the exact same performance in Windows and Linux if compared to each other. Hope that makes sense. At 1440p, we're seeing what we've seen with basically all of the Windows versus Linux benchmarking that we've done here on the channel in the past. When you're CPU bound in Linux, it will outperform Windows by a considerable margin. And with the RTX 4090, it is CPU bound at 1440p. At 4K, we become GPU bound once more and almost all the results here in both Windows and Linux with both RTX 4090s are on par with one another. So. No real big surprises here. Okay, time for Unige and Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used the 4K optimized preset, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Now, when we do Linux versus Windows stuff, we sometimes get comments along the lines of using the stock OpenGL implementation with Unige and Superposition versus the DX11 version for comparison. Now. All we're doing here is comparing the out of the box experience and this is just to give you a rough idea of performance. It's not the perfect solution, but you know, it is what it is. First up with the 1080p extreme benchmark, as usual, this one is highly GPU bound and much like all of our older Windows versus Linux testing, the Windows version of this benchmark far outperforms the Linux version. In Linux, the OpenGL version doesn't perform as well that's just how it is with Linux, regardless of the kernel version or the driver that's being used, whether you're using an AMD GPU or an NVIDIA GPU. I'm sure we'll see this with Intel GPUs later as well. At 1440p, we're seeing that being echoed again once more with the Windows version of the benchmark far outperforming the Linux-based OpenGL version. Again, no surprises here whatsoever. At 4K, we're seeing the same thing happen once again with the Windows DX11 version of the benchmark smashing the Linux OpenGL version in terms of performance. Again, you shouldn't be surprised by this result, but it is worth sharing. Now, let's move on to Cyberpunk 2077. FSR is supported on both Windows and AMD GPUs in both Windows and Linux, right? So we test these with both of those set to FSR in quality mode with no ray tracing to even out the playing field. Now I'm just saying this because when we do eventually do AMD benchmarks in Linux, 
you'll see the same thing here. The other thing to note is that since the Steam Deck has launched, we're actually seeing a lot more titles run flawlessly in Linux and Cyberpunk's one of those. You can thank Proton for that, but let's start it off with the 1080p benchmark. The Windows performance here is much faster than what we're seeing on Linux, and this is mainly to do with using Proton. Now, we don't always see this difference in performance with Proton being as big, but it is worth mentioning this here just for a bit of clarification. At 1440p, we're seeing the exact same results here. And now this one is interesting because we actually notice the Windows performance here also being near identical in our 4090 launch content at 1440p. And we're seeing this again in Linux. So this must just be a cyberpunk thing. At 4K, we're seeing basically the same results again for all of the three Linux resolutions. Now, I actually went in and tinkered with the configuration files manually to verify our findings. And these are the results that we got every single time. Now, it's pretty interesting, but at the same time, it's not really surprising given how Proton works. Lastly, we've got a new benchmark, Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a pretty popular one at the moment. And it also runs really well in Linux under Proton. And you can thank the Steam Deck for that, but let's see what the deal in Linux is. At 1080p in Horizon Zero Dawn, the 4090 performance is quite close relative to the amount of frames per second. As with most of the testing here, we're seeing Windows come out on top. And that's to be expected since this is running natively on Windows and through Proton in Linux, right? If you don't know what Proton is, we've done a whole video about this and I'll link that in the description. Moving on to 1440p, we're seeing similar results. Once again, we're pretty CPU bound with the RTX 4090 here in both Windows and in Linux, but no surprises here that Windows will come out on top once again. Lastly, at 4K, we're seeing both the ASUS and the Founders Edition cards pulling well ahead in Windows by about an average of 50 frames per second. Now, I actually retested this quite a few times just to verify the findings here, and that's the story at 4K. These are all the results that we found with the RTX 4090 so far in Linux. Now, we wanted to keep this one a little bit shorter since we've got a stack of other testing that we want to do here with the RTX 4090 and with Linux. This video is just to answer any initial questions people may have had about the Linux performance since we didn't have any drivers at the time of launch when we did our initial 4090 content. I would love to have had all of these results rolled into our original benchmarking, but you know, we didn't have drivers and we can only do what we can do when we have things. What do you guys think about the RTX 4090 launch so far? And let me know if you wanna see more Linux testing here on the channel. We'll always do Linux testing, but if you wanna see separate Linux stuff, let us know. I'm always keen to hear your thoughts on all this. As far as pricing and availability, we covered all of that in our initial review videos linked down below. However, it's been almost a week since the dust has settled, maybe less. And as far as I can tell here in Australia, at least, there are some cards available to purchase still. They are the more expensive ones, but you know, there is stock available. Hopefully, this will carry over into the impending release of the 4080 where we actually see stock, but it's hard to tell. I don't have a crystal ball and I can't tell the future. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, you know what to do. Please like the video. Please throw us a subscription. If you like this kind of content, and ring that notification bell if you haven't already. And if you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Not that it does much of anything anymore. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek, and I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a look into what the Linux performance is like with the 4090. I've got a lot more work to do here with the testing, but I thought that I would just share what I found so far just to answer those burning questions you may have had since the launch of the 4090, especially if you don't have one yet. And I haven't really seen anyone cover this, so I thought I would do my thing as we usually do and give the Linux peeps out there some love too. Thanks for watching.